Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is fight, fight. Now, finishing up the book of Esther this week, and I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know that I have as well. Enjoyed uh, reading over the story again and studying it. And the we're just going to look at two parts today. At the end, as you see that Esther is able to get the, uh, the decree reversed, the whole reason that she went to go see the king, she gets it reversed. And it, it essentially empowers the Jewish people to stand up and fight. It, it allows them to stand up for themselves. And, and look at how important this is. You know, I know we started this week talking about how God is not mentioned by name in the book of Esther and the problems that a lot of people have with that. But, but it is impossible to read this and not see God's hand at work again, even as it seems as though he's not there. It seems as though God is silent, but yet he's speaking volumes in the way that he was moving in the way of those who would trust him and be obedient. And God blesses them as a result. So today I want to look at, at two different passages. First is in chapter 9, Esther chapter 9, looking at the first two verses. And it says this, says now in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On, that, on the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred. And that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Azarias to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people. You know, you go to the last verse of the book in chapter 10, verse 3. It says, For Mordecai the Jew was second to King ah Ahasuerus. I think I said that wrong a minute ago. And was great among the Jews and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. Now, I, I love the fact that God always does the opposite of what people expect. And even as it's written there, as we first read that the, the day that the enemy hoped to succeed, the opposite came true. And as you read through this, you see that some 75,000 of the enemy is destroyed and killed because the people stood up and fought. They were fighting for, for, for themselves, for their freedom and for the oppression that they were under. And, and the king's command, the king's decree rather, allowed this to take place. It essentially empowered them. And, and think about how that happens is when even when the, the enemy thinks he's coming to get us, and in fact, God turns the enemy to do his work instead. I love how you see this throughout scripture. That a lot of times people thought that they were doing something evil and, and really, and I mean, they were, but uh, at times then God would take that evil and turn it into good for him. Now you say, now what does that have to do with us? Well, you see that Esther is protected. And I love the fact that the story, a lot of this story too, has a lot to do with Mordecai and his faith and his guidance as well. And I love that in the, in the end that we see that he too is lifted up. He too is, is uh, commended and, uh, for his work and for his faith. And, and not just in front of me. And it, it was in, in, it's not as important that he was lifted up so others could see. But the fact that he did all this where no one could see. You remember what God sees in secret? He'll reward us openly. And that's exactly what he did with Mordecai. But there again, that's exactly what he did. He fought for what he knew was true. Esther fought for what she then knew was true. And then the people were able to fight for a God they knew who was true. A God who they had seen rescue them even in the face of certain death and certain annihilation. But I wonder today, I wonder what we're willing to fight for. And you say, okay, so you're going out and saying, going out here and kill 75,000 people? Uh, absolutely not. You know, there's, there's a time and a, a place for everything, and that's not the kind of battle that we're in today. Today, what we're facing right now is a spiritual battle like none other, and yet we will not stand up and fight. 
We, we sit back and, and we almost just sit back and are silent as Esther was tempted to do. And, and we just say, well, we're just going to let it slide. But in, in your in your ear, I want you, in your spiritual ear, I want you to be able to hear the, the voice of the Lord speaking through Mordecai almost. I mean, just saying, look, if, if you're going to remain silent, uh, the deliverance is going to come from somewhere. But look at what you would miss out. Look today as if if God has put you where you are to stand up. Uh, to be a witness, to be a godly example, and you remain silent and fail at that witness, then God is going to witness to those people somehow. But look at what may be lost in the meantime. Look at who may not hear the gospel. Look at who may be even turned against the gospel because of our actions. See, this is a spiritual battle that we're in. And today, Christians, we need to quit just sitting on the sidelines. And we need to get into the fight. But praise the Lord, you don't have to do it alone. And one of the greatest things we talked about Wednesday night, he gave us a sword. The only offensive weapon in our arsenal of spiritual armor. In our armor, right? We, everything is defensive except for the offensive word of God. And the word of God is offensive to many. But the truth often is. So you don't fight with your words. Fight with the word of God. God bless you all, and I pray you have a great, great day.